There was a Canadian songwriter who wrote songs about exploring. About tracing one warm line into a wild, savage nothingness. He said all he found there was the road back home. The TW200 needs open country. Around here, we underestimate it as a silly bike, a novelty, a relic. But this is North America's last true farm bike. Respect is what that deserves. And across the desert, we'll find it. Three hundred kilometers of semi-arid badlands span the Thompson Plateau. These ruts, rifts, and rocks make the perfect proving grounds for a bike that's made to plow wherever we point it. And the T-Dub neither follows nor avoids tracks. One need not pick lines nor even consider riding it to be a sport. The bike pushes anywhere as a point of duty, like a tank. We can thank the rear tire on the front and the ATV tire on the rear for this otherworldly grip and buoyancy. See, farm bikes are not about going off-road, they're about going off-trail. Spongy forest floor, mucky cow fields, shale rock, side hills, where the sidewall lugs grip like a herd of mountain goats. In open country, TW rides free. So I'm heading into the void to find something we lost there. A place, a time, where rolling off the trail bed wasn't a sin punishable by death. I want to find the open range out there. And in here. There's a lot of bikes I could probably take down here, but only one that I would. A bike that can be had in exchange for your average tax return. A brand new 30 year old motorcycle, damn near unchanged since 1987, with R&D costs faded beyond memory and three decades of replacement parts. No one is afraid to drop these things off a cliff. It's dense down here, but farm bikes are geared for herding cows, which means they also excel at plunking through unrideable terrain. The thing is basically unstallable at a walking pace. In a maze of dead ends, I'm thankful for the tiny first gear that makes it trivial to pop turn back out. Now eventually, the gully bottoms out at a jagged riverbed. But with the leprechauns reach the ground, it's impossible to fall. At the first hint of a tumble, I'm already flat-footed. You really can't get the trailway in too deep. Between the low cost, low height, low weight, low gearing, there's no mess it can't climb its way out of. Whew, I can't believe it made it up that. <laughs> No shit, I can get the TW200 places, I couldn't take my DRZ. And with the first gear this tall and tires this wide, well farm bikes will churn through anything.
Without thinking, the TW ushers me into the most desolate part of the crossing. On a bike that never falters, it's easy to get caught way out there. Well, this carb has my back. I'm jetted lean, it takes a shitload of choke and patience to start on a cold morning, but damn if it can't squeeze 200 kilometers out of a tank. That's not bad for a seven liter thimble. Now almost a quarter of which is the reserve I just hit. Now we'll make it out. At 9.5 to one, I've had farts with higher compression than this engine. The TW will run on any old hooch from any old moonshiner's cabin on the mountain. 87 octane, it's more than enough. Like a brick shithouse, the bike is so unrefined that it becomes an asset. And there's nothing to go wrong. Even the battery is backed up with a ready-made kickstart port and a rear tire with so much grip you could bump start it in a lake. Of course, not everything from the 80s was tougher. And these handlebars bend if you breathe on them. The skid plate is made from aluminum foil. Foot pegs are sized for infants, and the handguards are invisible. But when it comes to the cold, critical systems, farm bikes never buy the farm. They're reassuringly reliable out here. Like their cast iron cylinder, you can use them up, and when you do, you'll only have bored into a whole new life cycle. These unkillable machines look at the adventurer's adventure and say, well, sure, I won't get there fast, but I'll always get there. There is where overtaking waypoints and our riding buddies doesn't matter. There is where a young man can ride to the North Pole on a farm bike just because it's there. Without cameras or timers or Twitter feeds, there is what we really mean by adventure. And I can see it from here and nowhere. The next morning, I climbed the mountain pass that bisects Canada's desert. Our T-dub has some decidedly weird geometry. You can scrape pegs and still leave chicken strips the size of pool noodles. What's even more shocking is that you can ride to the limits with zero fear. Unlike every dual sport ever, the TW has rims as small as 14 and 18 inches, and tires as wide as a leader bike, so it's flicky and grippy. Quite a bit more so than its speed requires. If you want to see what 13 horsepower looked like in 1987, just look down. 115 kilometers an hour, eventually. I'd go up a tooth in the front so she'll cruise at 100 without having an asthma attack, but no more than that. I'd hate to lose the wheel popping, tree climbing playfulness of that short gearbox. After two chilling hours, I can say that the engine has no sizzle. It feels like it's been detuned to run for half a century without maintenance, and so farmers can plop their eight-year-olds on it without fear of killing a kid, which is accurate. But the motor is typically steadfast. With its lean mixture and 400-pound farmer's wife load capacity, RTW shows little fade under altitude or luggage. It just trucks on like a tractor. I get the sense that this bike is a hoot on pavement by accident. Dropping into the desert once more, the T-Dub street performance seems a hilarious side effect of its primary abilities. Na 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 na, na 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 na, na 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 gonna take my time. Do 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 do. 
The last 50 kilometers bring traces, the tracks of modern motorcycling. I see routes for hill climbers, jumpers, racers, for trail bikes and trial bikes, big bikes and little, a tiny corner of this desert parceled for each, and a corner of every model lineup to match. My open range motorcycle is starting to feel silly again, a novelty and a relic. There's no point in squirt power. You gotta ride it like a bobsled, using the sidewall lugs to carve on dirt the way a sport bike carves on the track. Holding speed is the name of the game, and it kinda works. But you know the freight train is utterly uncomfortable moving quickly. When they miss the sky, they ought to look around. On the whoops, they say the T-dub can't jump. Utter nonsense. The T-dub can't land. And that sinewy, soft suspension which glues to rock crawls like a goat knocks its knees on big hits. Soar like an eagle, land like a hippo. Even as a dual sport, the T-dub feels out of place. With a drum at the rear, braking requires the foresight of a retirement planner. Unexpected turns are oft overshot. The TW200 needs to see where it's going. Put out to pasture, off piste. Which is a joy my generation barely knows. We don't make a lot of farm bikes in North America, and we sell even less. Replacing open range machines with specialized single use vehicles. Replacing open ranges with litigious single use land. But as long as there's a desert in here, and if the piano company keeps putting one in there, we only need a smidge of free land at the end of this all.